People usually say that our worst enemy is ourselves. Well, I don't know if you agree with that sentence, but the game that I'm going to show you today is basically me facing myself. Or at least another person which nickname in chat.com was Zoho. That's pretty funny and a bit of a coincidence. And this game is kind of instructive. So let me show you what happened and I hope you can learn something here. Well, the game started with Zoho playing e4. I played c5, the Sicilian defense, knight f3, g6. This is the hyper accelerated dragon variation which I like to play. And after d4, putting a pawn in the center, uh, opening lines for the dark square bishop. I took on d4, he took on d4 with the knight. This is a very important choice. Taking with the knight or taking with the queen, they lead to very different positions. And after bishop to g7, he played bishop to e3, putting the bishop in a position where it defends the knight, because after knight c6, the knight is attacked two times. So he is already defending two times because of the bishop. He played knight c3, I played knight f6, and after bishop c4, I castle, he put the bishop on b3, avoiding tacticals uh, about this pawn and this bishop here with, because it is loose. And then I played e6. It is possible to play here with the e6 or d6, but I like to play with e6 and d5. The position results in something like this. Take stakes and we have an IQP kind of position, isolated queen spawn. This pawn can be good for black or it can be bad, depending on how the game will continue. Because this pawn can advance and cause some trouble to the white pieces, but right now the pawn is blockade, there are some pieces attacking the pawn, so I have to be careful because this pawn is constantly a target. So I have to defend it very well and be aware of the tactics that can appear in this position. So I, after he played queen to d2, aiming to trade bishops in the future, I played the move bishop to a6, bringing another defender to the pawn. And in this IQP's position, it's very common to leave piece on e6 or in c6 or if you are playing white in e3 or c3 the idea being that if white ever takes i fix my pawn structure it is not an isolated pawn anymore it can happen like this too and this kind of trades usually benefits the person which is with the isolated pawn in that case, it would not be isolated anymore. So I want to leave pieces here just to provoke my opponent into doing one of these captures in the future. He played f3, I played a6. The idea is taking away the b5 square for one of these pieces. He plays rook f e1, putting the rook in the open file i did the same put my rook on e1 but it is even more important to me to do this because when this bishop moves there will be two attackers in the bishop and there was, there was only one defender so rook to e8 i said e1 i think sorry rook to e8 brings another defender to to the bishop after he played rook a d1, bringing another rook to the center, I did the same, but put my rook on c8. But remember when I said that usually these positions, uh, the person with the IQP leaves a piece here. So in this situation, computer suggests the move knight a5. The idea being putting the knight on c4. Because there is no big pawn that can kick me. And for instance, uh, just a waiting move. If I play like this, I would have, I would win at least a bishop pick. So, 
uh, and if and if y takes i take and the pawn is not isolated anymore it can be defended that was the best plan according to the computer but i just bring my rook to the same open file so he played bishop to g5 which is an interesting move since my knight feels my knight on f6 is one of the defenders on my isolated pawn and by doing this move he is pinning my knight so here i play the move queen to b6 i noticed that uh, once this bishop lives this square it opened the diagonal to his king on g1 so now he was pinning my knight but i unpinned myself to pin his own knight and here the correct move is bishop back to d3 unpinning the knight and after this i was thinking about playing queen c7 or queen a5 but here it came to the mistake of the game he played the move knight to a4 and i noticed that move was bad and I tried to understand why, and after some thought, I decided to take, queen takes, knight takes, and rook takes d4. After this move, I have a very nice knight jump to e4. You can see that uh, the computer does not like this move very, very much, because it prefers b5 first, and when the knight comes back to c4, 2c3 then it suggests the move knight to e4 so the idea of knight to e4 is correct but doing this uh, kicking the knight from e4 is a little bit more precise and the reason that i think is that way is because the knight can in the future come to b6 so by playing b5 you already make the knight go all the way down to c3 but I didn't notice that B pawn advanced first. I played immediately knight to e4. The idea being that I am attacking the bishop, but at, at the same time I'm hitting the rook. White cannot defend both at the same time. So I am going to win at least the exchange. And now black has to think, do I want to lose my rook to the knight or to the bishop? Well, my opponent chose to take the knight with the rook and after pawn takes e4 bishop takes rook takes we are in a position where it is very pleasant for black to play here my opponent played the move c3 but this allows b5 which completely traps the knight since it has no squares to go and here my opponent resigned but what I want to show you is that if he had thought a little bit more, he would he for sure would have find the more the best continuation for white, which is bishop to e3, because in that way you will lose the rook. But you're not going to lose the rook for the knight, you're going to win my dark square bishop, which results in a completely different position since I have weak dark squares around my king and uh, because I don't have the dark square bishop I cannot contest his dark square bishop the best continuation from here according to the computer is moving the knight threatening the bishop and now you can see why the computer suggests b5 earlier because the knight has just had this jump and after knight takes you cannot take the rook yet because I'm going to win two pieces. After taking the knight, I can play rook to d8. And uh, I am, I have material advantage, but it's not easy to progress. Since the knight covers the c8 squares that I would like to be just to control the c8, the c file. This pawn cannot advance because it is blockaded by a dark square bishop and I cannot contest this bishop. My bishop on e6, it's more like a big pawn. Its activity is not too, too good. And here, I'd have to do some work to win this position. This would, be, would have been 
the best continuation for my opponent. And this is something we have to be aware in our games. Whenever we notice that we are going to be down material, we have to try to think, what is the best way to lose material? I mean, is there a way that I can lose material but be but have compensation positionally? This is something not very easy to notice, but as much games you play, you are going to train this skill of noticing the the dynamics of the position and try to balance any material loss with positional advantage. So I hope you liked this video. It was a, a very coincidence facing an opponent which has Zoho in the name and at the same time the game being very instructive. So this game, this was so amazing and I hope you like it. See ya!